what people believe on our planet depends so much on whereabouts on the planet they happen to be born, which is a fairly odd thing. The Adam and Eve myth is believed by a lot of people in certain parts of the world. But if you go to other parts of the world, you'll find them believing very different myths. This is a Hindu myth. These creation myths are very beautiful, but they're all different from one another, and they can't all be true. And it's very odd if people believe simply what the other people in their own country happen to believe just because they're in that, that country. Look how scientists handle their disagreements now. Take a particular disagreement. Why did the dinosaurs go extinct? There are various theories. This is the theory that a comet or meteorite hit the Earth and caused a catastrophe that drove the dinosaurs extinct, and a lot of scientists believe that. A lot of scientists, on the other hand, believe that a virus killed the dinosaurs. And another lot of scientists believe that the mammals arose and ate the dinosaurs' eggs. Now, no doubt there's something going for all those theories. The point is that different scientists believe them. And the reason why they disagree is that there isn't enough evidence yet. Everybody knows, everybody agrees about what sort of evidence would be needed in order to make them change their mind. But suppose science worked like creation myths or like languages. Here we have a map of world languages. In this red area, English is spoken. There, Spanish is spoken. There, Russian is spoken. And it's quite natural that pe you should be able to, to plot a map like that, that people should speak the language of their country. But what if scientific theories were like that? What if we had a similar map of the distribution of scientific theories? Suppose in the red area, everyone believed the meteor theory of the dinosaur extinction. And in that area, everybody believed the virus theory. And in that area, everybody believed the mammals eating the eggs theory. Wouldn't that be a pretty silly sort of science? Imagine the scene, two scientists arguing, and one of them says, I believe that the dinosaurs went extinct because a comet hit the Earth. Why do I believe that? Because that's what my father and grandfather believed. And that's what people in my country have always believed. But I believe that it was a virus that drove the dinosaurs extinct. Why do I believe that? Because my father and grandfather believed it, and that's what people in my country have always believed. Or, suppose the conversation went like this. Never mind the evidence. I just know that a comet struck the Earth because it's been privately revealed to me that a comet struck the Earth. But I just know that it was a virus because I just know it because I just know it because I have faith that it was a virus. If you overheard conversations like that, you'd think they were pretty odd scientists, wouldn't you? You'd see no reason to believe any of them. Growing up in the universe partly means evolving from simple to complicated, inefficient to efficient, brainless to brainy. But it also means growing out of parochial and superstitious views of the universe, growing up to a proper scientific understanding of the universe based upon evidence public argument, rather than authority or tradition or private revelation. Growing up means trying to understand how the universe works, not copping out with supernatural ideas that only seem to explain things but actually explain nothing.